Hello, this is Eric Bobro. In this lesson, we'll look at the creation of roofs in ARCHICAD 15 and 16. I'm working here in ARCHICAD 16, and I've opened up the file from ARCHICAD 14. You'll see that the roofs all came through just fine. So you can actually bring files forward, and you can create roofs that are very similar in ARCHICAD 15 and later. However, there are some new options that were introduced into ARCHICAD 15. Some of them make these roof creations uh, easier, and others actually have surprising complications. Uh, it's important to understand how to take advantage of what's there, as well as how to avoid some of the surprising little uh, areas that can be confusing. So what I'll do is take the walls that I've already got here, go to the wall tool with the marquee active, and select all the walls, and drag a copy of these over nice even distance. And then we'll go uh, and take a look at them in 3D. And you can see that the, the walls are actually varying sizes. What I want to do is bring them down all to the same size so I can start out sort of nice and neutral. So I'll select all the walls. Now you notice when I selected all the walls that they actually say that they're all at the same height. That's because some of them are at the, that height. But what I can do is I can select any one of them that's not, for example, this wall here, deselect it, then reselect it, and what that will do is it will actually then show the last value selected. And now when I make the change, it'll affect all the ones that need to be adjusted here. Now there is one individual one that was used for the box gable. I'm just going to have to manually change that one down to start um, at the ground level so that we are starting from the same point. Now that I've created those uh, a copy of the walls, let's start drawing the first roof, which will be a shed roof in this corner. Now, in order to create that shed roof, I'll go to the new geometry option, which is a single plane roof as compared to a multi-plane roof. So I'm picking a single plane roof and a rectangle, and it'll be very much the same. Just choose the slope, the 4 and 12, go here and define the pivot line, the direction of upward um, sloping, and then select that roof after drawing it and use the pet palette option to make it a little larger to have an overhang. Now we'll go to 3D and we'll start seeing the first changes that we um, will encounter. So we'll take a look here. I'll take these four walls, select them all, change them to be higher than the roof. And let's take a look. The command under the design menu that used to be called Trim to Roof is no longer there. Um, it's been changed to Crop to Roof. And in fact, it's not showing up in the standard ARCHICAD 16 menus. In, in place of the uh, ARCHICAD 14, we have a Connect menu that describes various things that you can do with trimming things to roofs. Now the equivalent of the old trim to roof was uh, that in ARCHICAD 14 and earlier is the command that you can get from the right click context menu called crop to single plane roof. So Graphisoft changed the term and it was in the menus in 15 but actually seems to be only in the context menu in 16. The crop to single plane roof looks identical to the old um, command except for the name crop instead of trim and then if I say crop it here you can see it cuts this off but just like before if I were to take this roof and change its slope down we'll see that it does not actually update the wall connection there. Now the only reason that I still use that command and the reason why Graphisoft maintains it is that you can actually delete the roof and still have the walls trimmed and you can't do that in the later versions where you're using solid element operations or the new connect command because if you delete the roof then the walls will restore to their full height. You can use this option here if you do want to have a sloped top on a wall perhaps for a ramp without having a roof actually sitting there. Now I'll undo that and we'll go now to the option that we are going to use from now on which is Select all the walls here, go to the design menu, go to connect, 
trim elements to roof or shell. And so this is the new command that allows us to select a roof. So you can see that it's got a cursor that looks like a little roof. I click on it. It highlights the roof to say that's the one that I'm using as a trimming element. And the status area says click to select which part to keep. So do I want the lower part or the upper part? I'll click on the lower part and we get the result as expected. Now let me just undo that and do the opposite. So I'll do connect trim elements to roof or shell, click on the roof, and then click on the upper part, and you can see how the walls now are sitting on top of the roof, although they still will display the original baseline, and in fact their setting still is set to start there. That way if the roof moves up or down, they'll still understand how far they should extend. Now the, another variation here is that I have these walls selected, and I select the roof as well and then go to the same command, Design, Connect, Trim Elements to Roof or Shell. Here, it doesn't ask me which one I should trim to. It says, do you want to use the roof or shell that's in the current selection, which would be the most common thing to do. Occasionally, you might want to select a different one, and then you'll have the option to uh, indicate that. But if I say Trim here, it actually trims the underside just as you'd expect. Now, if I go to the Roof tool um, uh, here, if I just uh, select the roof alone and press down with the pet palette. I can go and, let's say, slope it down. You can see how the trim is similar to a solid element operation. Or, of course, I can go and take it up higher. And just like before, it'll keep that connection, although I'll have to raise the walls if the roof gets that steep. So that connection is very much similar to the solid element operation. The solid element operations are under the design menu. In 16, they seem to be back in the design menu, just underneath Connect. In version 15, they were a sub-item of the Connect menu. And I imagine Graphisoft got some people confused, saying, where is that command? So they decided to put it back here in the main menu, because there are times when you want to use solid element operations. And we'll see that a little later on. Now. Um, the flat roof is obviously going to be the same as we had in the previous version. So in other words, I'll just simply drag a copy of this single plane roof and change this single plane roof to a zero height, and that's going to give me the result that you would expect here. So we look at that, and you can see the result. Now, in addition, if we uh, zoom out here, we've got the roof that's called um, a skillion and lean-to roof that is this combination here of this one shed roof and this other shed roof that's on a second part of the building. I'm just going to drag a copy of this um, over because this is exactly the same way we would work in ARCHICAD 15 or 16, um, basically just with the single plane roof option here and perhaps rectangular pieces of roof. So now let's move on to where we're going to use the new styles. And so we'll do a simple open gable roof here. And this one will be the most basic. Um, and it actually shows a couple of enhancements. One is that we're going to be working with a roof system, the multi-plane roofs. And the other is that we're going to be working with a gable. Previously, we only had the option if we were going to create a system of roofs, it would be a hip system. Now we can actually do a gable. So choosing the gable option here, we have within the controls the option to say what the offset is. So this is similar to what we had in the poly roof creation, where we could determine that offset beforehand. But we actually can determine this afterward as well. So in other words, if I create this here, you see how it created that roof. We'll just select the roof here, or the area, and go to 3D. And we can select this, and even after the fact, go in and change the offset, perhaps, you know, to 3 feet. Um, and you can see how it just extended it out. Um, now, uh, we can also change the slope uh, equally easily. Uh, this is one element. It's a roof system as opposed to um, just two roofs. Now I'll go to the uh, walls here and again make them taller. And remembering what I demonstrated earlier, I'll select the roof as well and go Design, Connect, Trim Elements, and just hit Enter. 
and the job is done. Very nice there. So now we'll move on to another area uh, where this works beautifully, and that is in this series of hips and pyramid and hexagon roofs. So I'll go to the roof tool here and simply switch from the um, uh, gable version to the hip version and use the magic wand and click on this and you can see how it filled in all of the um, hips and valleys automatically. Now it looks a little bit different because the default is for it to be a dotted line. I'm going to select the roof and we'll see where we can control that. So if I open this up and uh, say bring up the floor plan and section, we'll see that the outlines for the roof when they're overhead have a control and the default in ARCHICAD 15 and 16 is to make them dotted um, rather than solid, but I'm going to make them solid just so I can see it better. And I'll use the eyedropper to pick the settings up so that the next roofs that I work on will also have that setting. And I'll just magic wand this pyramidal, this square to create a pyramid and magic wand the hexagon to create a similar um, shape here. Actually, it looks like it didn't do the overhang quite right. Um, maybe uh, that shape looks like it, it picked it up from the inside. So let me go to the outside edge of the wall and do that. There we go. Now it uh, did that. So it you can trace the inside ring or the outside. Uh, if you do the inside, of course, you'd want to have a different set of overhangs. So let's just take a look at this in 3D and discuss one customization that you might want to do um, here. So you can see very nice what uh, what happened uh, easily. But again, we can select a roof after the fact and perhaps change under the multiplane geometry the overhang to a different um, size, maybe make it a little bit more dramatic so we can see that, perhaps change the slope um, here and uh, you can see how it can reconfigure the whole thing, which we couldn't do before. So I'll undo that. Um, now, suppose we wanted to make this a gable. Previously, we would select just this one piece of roof and delete it and then adjust the neighboring pieces to fill in the gap. But now we don't have that option because if I try to select it, I select the entire roof system. And if I hit delete, I'll delete the entire roof. But what I need to do is to recognize, first of all, that there's a blue outline that is the pivot line for the roof. In this case, it automatically traced the outside of the walls. It could have done the inside of the walls as well, or the reference line if I had the reference line offset um, from the outside or inside face. Now, each edge has a plane associated with it. In this case, the plane is a hip but I want to change it to a gable. So I'll press down on the blue edge and I get the pet palette and there's a new option here at the end of the first row that is custom plane settings. And I can change the slope of this to make it steeper or shallower, but I can also change it from pitched to a gable. And this will work very nicely to automatically do that. And of course, then I would select this wall, tell it to get taller either by typing in a new value um, here or just using the pet palette to edit it and then perhaps select the roof and the wall and then go to the design connect trim elements to roof or shell and the job is done. So now let's go on to another case where um, this new multiplane roof really works well um, for the most part and that is uh, here where we're going to create, let me just show you um, what we're going to have here. This uh, I show all in 3D. We're going to be creating these next two roofs um, here, so a mansard roof and uh, what is called in the diagram a combination roof. So in both cases there are um, there are two planes that are connected uh, with different slopes in one case we have a steep one going to shallow, in the other case the reverse. So let me go into this area and we'll create those. They're basically done with the standard controls directly in the roof tool where I add another level to the multiplane roof geometry. And I set the lower one, in this case, to a very steep 48 and 12. 
um, and then the upper one to a shallow, uh, say, 4 and 12. Now, how far it's going to go up before it changes, that's set here. This is similar to the controls we had in the poly roof creation. And I'm going to go and say that this uh, should be 14 feet. And this one will just go until it reaches this level or reaches the other ridge lines, essentially, um, will not keep going if, if the roof closes in on itself. So we'll just say, OK, that looks good. And in this case, I want to just click on the two corners, and you can see how it created that shape. I'll go ahead and um, make the other one for the uh, combination roof, which is a much shallower one here. So um, 6 and 12 for the lower one, 12 and 12 are 45 degrees for the upper one is what I have, and I need to set where the break line is going to be properly. If I have this too high, then we won't, won't even see this upper one because it'll just keep on going at that slope. So I need to make this just go, in this case, I think, uh, a very short distance. Um, and now I say OK and draw the next one. And we'll take a look at them in 3D. And we'll see that very, very quickly with the new options, we're able to get those two shapes. Now the one change that we'll need to do here with the um, mansard roof is that the fascia, the vertical sides at the edge of the roof, um, really look rather odd because this is so, so steep. Um, and there's no way to control that before you create it. But if I go to the edge, actually the um, top of the edge here, not the bottom, you see on the bottom there's no sensitivity um, to it, but on the top you can see the Mercedes cursor press down on it and go to the command at the end of the, set of the first row of the pet palette, the new one that says custom edge settings as opposed to custom plane. Um, since I was on an edge, it, it gave me that control. And I can then say that I want it to be either perpendicular or horizontal and apply it only on the one edge that's clicked or on the polygon, which would be all the linked edges. Or in some cases, we may have more than one group or polygon of edges, an outer one and an inner one, perhaps. And then we might need to use all edges. But selected polygon and all edges will both be the same in this case. So I'll just say OK. And you can see how it updated that very nicely. So now we're going to go and look at some of the cases where um, there are some complications, where it works nicely, but uh, we need to make some adjustments uh, to it. So we'll go in and work with a gambrel roof. So I'll go to the roof tool. We'll change it from a hip to a gable situation because a gambrel is just a complex gable. And then in um, here, I'll switch the slope, say, to the ones that I worked out for this. So it's going to be somewhat steep on the bottom and then much shallower at the top. And I need to tell it how high it's going to go. I think uh, take this up here. And of course, the offset is something that we can control. So this will work pretty well um, here, but we'll get a little bit of a complication. You can see that there are what appear to be four separate roof pieces, and there's this funny little bump out here. So let's take a look at what happened and how close we are um, when we do that. So you can see that it actually created the gambrel shape pretty easily, but this upper area is stuck out. Now I don't know why it did that in the sense of I don't know, didn't see any place where I could control it, but there's an easy way to fix it, and that is I can go to this edge, press down when I'm when I get a Mercedes on the actual edge of the polygon, and then use the option here in the pet palette that's called offset gable overhang. And so when I have that option chosen, then I can actually just reposition and snap it in. And so you see how it quickly cleans that up. And I can do it on the other side just as easily, just press down on the edge, and it remembers that was the last command. So I can just simply click to reposition that edge. So that works pretty well. And then, of course, I'm going to take the walls um, and make the walls, let's say, uh, uh, connected. So I'll go to the design menu, connect, trim elements to roof shell, and 
I didn't see a change because those walls are, are still short, but I can select them after the fact and perhaps raise them up and they will, you know, clean up here to, uh, as long as they're tall enough to get up to be on the top. Now, some other changes that you can do that are brand new in terms of manipulation of the roofs, um, and I'll just zoom in on the, this so that we can see it a little bit better. I can press down on, let's say, the ridge line here, and you'll see that there's an option in the pet palette that's for elevating the roofs, elevating the horizontal ridge. So you see that I can elevate this, or, of course, take it the other direction, so take it lower. I can also do this for the ones that are in the middle, in other words, not on a ridge. And this, if I choose this option here, it will let me get it taller or shorter, but it'll basically stretch the on, along the same angle. So you can see that it is um, stretching along the same angle, and uh, raising the elevation. Here I'm going to take it back down, for example. So it's going to keep that angle. Now, separately, we also have the option to move this sideways. So in addition to going up and down, we also have the option to move it sideways. So if we move it sideways um, here, we'll see that it gets asymmetrical. So, you know, this slope is different than the other one. Um, and uh, let me just undo that. Um, so now it's back centered. I can also move one of the um, intermediate points or edges sideways. And then what you'll see is that as I move it sideways, look at how the ridge line is repositioning itself. So it actually moved, in this case, to the right, and the ridge line moved halfway because it kept the symmetry on it. Um, now, of course, I can end up with something that's, you know, quite asymmetrical here. If you take it far enough, um, you'll end up with uh, a, something that uh, is actually takes off that piece so it, it automatically assumes that if you take it beyond the edge that it it should take out that that plane um, we can also reposition you know the the um, ridge line that way so you can play around with these things to get um, uh, the shape or proportions that you want um, and let's just press down and they move this sideways. So you can do this until you get something that looks right, that perhaps measures right in terms of its heights. And then let's say that you decided you like this particular shape. If you wanted to get it symmetrical, what we want to do is read off what the value is on each side. So for example, if I go to this pivot line and press down and use the option for the custom edge or custom plane, I can read what that slope is either in rise over run like this or in degrees. So this is 81.32 degrees. I can even copy this um, here. And then I could go and perhaps go to the other side, press down, take the same command here, and then just type in or paste in that same value like that. And you can see how it reconfigures. Um, and with a little bit of adjustment, you can basically get it symmetrical or precisely position things but after you've done some sketching. So this can be a very useful thing. Now we do have this issue here where the edge is, you know, because it's so steep, uh, we want to make this perhaps, you know, perpendicular or horizontal um, and, uh, you know, that'll clean up there. So those are some of the things that you may need to uh, know about when you're working with a gambrel roof to clean up the edge overhang um, and also the possibility of adjusting the heights um, or moving left or right um, some of these elements. So moving on, we're going to look at the box and gable, which also is very easy to create, except that there's one little tricky part that is important to know about. So let's say, for example, that um, I go back to the roof settings here and just delete the second one and just put this at just a single level and create the 8 and 12 slope here and draw this down and you can see how it created that um, very easy to do let's go to 3d and we'll see that we've got the actual box of walls plus the extra piece of wall that's going to ultimately be raised up underneath the roof so 
here's what we'll do is we'll select all of these walls and we'll take them up say taller than the roof just like usual and then we'll select the roof and we'll go use the design connect trim elements here now you may not have noticed it but that extra piece of wall has disappeared now I didn't actually get deleted if we go back to the floor plan we'll see that this wall still exists it still says that it's going from 0 to 20 feet and yet it's not appearing in 3d well the problem is that this roof has a certain setting which is the default and that has to do with the section under model here for called the trimming body so the trimming body is a new control with these new poly uh, multiplane geometry uh, roofs that allows you to control whether the area that's being trimmed for example you know what part of the walls are actually going to be affected is constrained or uh, or um, put within the pivot lines or if it's going to be the contour lines so the contour lines would be the full extent of the roof polygons as opposed to the pivot lines which in this case are wrapping around the the base wall so when I change it to contours down and say OK you'll see that that extra wall came back because it now is instead of being outside of the roof body it's now within the part that the roof controls and so then I can easily go and change you know its base like this up into position and now we have the traditional box end so it's important to know that sometimes you need to go into the roof tool and change the trimming body from pivot lines down to contours down and this is one of the effects that you'll get now we'll look at another set of roofs that one would think you'd be able to do easily with the poly roof the multiplane roof tool but actually are a little bit tricky you have to break them up into pieces so I'm going to take a look in 3d and we'll take a look for example we have this salt box roof and we have the butterfly roof and there are issues in terms of doing them with the new uh, multiplane roof tool one is that in the multiplane roof tool all of the roofs that are of a similar type um, need to be at the same plate height so in other words you can't have it raised up you know, in, in this case, one roof um, here with a higher plate line than the other. And the other is that you can't have negative slopes like this butterfly. Now, there are ways to do it, to be sure, but it's important to know that you have to step outside the box in order to do that. So let's take a look at how we accomplish that. So I'll go to the roof tool and we'll just uh, perhaps set it to have a an offset of zero because we want to make this snug to the wall um, and uh, I'm going to just set it up to the slope that I think would be appropriate here you notice that when I change it down here it changes up there as well um, and now I'll draw the box here so very quickly we get that shape however when I go to 3d and I say well what if I were to just move this ridge line over so I'll select the roof and we do have the option to either elevate the ridge line which would change the slope or move it sideways and I can say I'd like to move it sideways so we're gonna get something sort of like that other roof but it still has the same plate height at both sides instead of being different so what I need to do actually is undo this and right click on the roof and change it to a single plane roof using the split into single plane roofs command and it will warn me that it's going to delete the original roofs and replace them and if you had any dimensions annotating those roofs they'll disappear but I'm going to go ahead and split them now you can see that there are two separate roofs here so I can just take the one on the side and raise up its plate height here and then follow the process that we um, that we had earlier which is to select the lower roof as the controlling one, command or control click the edge of the upper roof to reposition that edge automatically, select this left hand one and command or control click the other one and now we have the shape that we want um, and uh, of course I can go and select all of these walls um, and make them 
you know, the 20 feet um, and select, in this case, the two roofs um, here and do the connect trail elements to roof shell and there we go and then we can go to the roofs and just make them the material that would match and you can see how quickly we can get that done. So we basically created the uh, multiplane roof with a gable and then turned that roof into two separate pieces was uh, at least a little bit faster perhaps than what we would have done in RCAD 14. And in the same way we'll go to the butterfly by creating a roof here. Now with the butterfly I think we actually had it with an offset um, so we can go in the multiplane geometry and, and tell it to have an offset. Um, but then we can't actually change the slope to a negative number. If I change it from 6 and 12 and I type in you know minus 2, we'll see that it actually um, gives me an error. Actually, it gives me a question on this, but it never changes it to a negative value. Um, what it was asking about, and we'll take a look at this in 3D, um, is it was asking whether to keep the um, edges that were gables as gables because it would have actually turned it into um, a, uh, a hip if I had said go ahead and change the custom edges. Um, the, uh, so what I need to do here, since I'm not allowed to make this a negative value, is I need to again just split this into single plane roofs and then with the two roofs selected I can easily go and change this to whatever negative value I want and then I'm going to be able to trim the walls to the roof. So I'll uh, select all the walls as well as the roofs and we'll try to do the connect operation, trim elements to roof or shell. Um, now we see that there's actually a little problem with this negative slope that it doesn't quite interpret that correctly. Um, so let's just try um, doing it in the more elaborate way where we select the walls and go to the design, connect, trim elements to roof or shell, and then um, then click on the uh, this one roof here. Actually, it's interesting. It, it picked up both of them. It says click on which part you want to keep from the element, and I'll try to click on the lower part of the walls. But you see it did not actually trim properly. So it's not working, and the only workaround I found here is to go back to the design menu, solid element operations. So just like in our CAD 14, we're going to take these four walls and make them targets, and I'm going to select the two roofs and make them operators, do subtraction with upward extrusion, and we're done. So just use solid element operations when you need to. Now moving on, we're going to go on to the M-shaped roof, uh, where we have the similar issue where we need to create um, a downward slope and there are different ways to do that but certainly one way would be to have a negative sloped roof um, so we could go and do something similar to what we had um, here except make this uh, um, have a another plane because uh, we want to make this perhaps 12 and 12 and I'll just take this some distance um, over then I'll have a different slope. I can't type in a negative value. If I type in negative 12 or something like that, it will just constrain this to um, something that's very close to zero but not zero. It won't go negative. So I'll just put in some arbitrary value here and I'll adjust that afterward. So I'll say OK and uh, we'll go and create this shape. And you see that we actually have a rather odd situation here. Let's take a look in 3D and we'll correct these things. This is why training and experimentation will get you prepared for these things. So the little overhang here is controlled by that edge, this option here to reposition. Um, it's uh, called the gable overhang um, uh, here. So I can just snap that into position. So that part is easily addressed. 
but then the issue will be that I want to have this go up and then go down, and I can't get that with the um, with the uh, multiplane roof. I'm going to go and just move the um, the uh, height of this to make it a little bit better, a little bit more where I think it should be. So now if I go, it'll go up and down. What I'll do is I'll split this into single plane roofs. Now when I do this, it looks just fine at first, and it is actually okay, but there is something odd here. If I select the roof here, you notice that the blue line, which is the pivot line, is not actually in the same place as the seam where the two roofs change. It actually is moved over to where it's horizontally displaced from the top of the other roof. I don't know why Graphisoft did that um, when the split happened, but what we need to do is do two things. Um, we're going to just select these two roofs here and put a negative slope on them here. And then we might actually move this up or down if we need to um, into position, um, you know, perhaps using the new uh, multi-level move, this option here, which allows us to um, move up or down using the uh, the the uh, 3D snaps. So here I can, you know, perhaps reposition this. Um, previously we had that uh, separate choice to move it up or down or sideways. Now we can do one or both in the same step. So having done that, again I'm going to select this roof and Command or Control click the edge of the other one to reposition it. Select second roof and command or control this and we need to make sure we're on an edge. You saw that dialog box come up. I need to make sure that ARCHICAD doesn't get confused and that it can see which edge is which. So if I have this selected and I am not ambiguous then I can have it reposition. And obviously the same thing would happen here. I'll take this one and reposition the other one by command or control clicking and do the inverse and now we're done with that. So a few little wrinkles there. One was the gable overhang and the other is that after splitting it, it actually was no longer, um, when I uh, reversed the slope, it no longer was matching. Um, you know, it sort of pivoted around an odd shape. Um, but ultimately you can work with this this way. You could also do the older way the, where we basically just created four separate roofs and just work with them individually from right from the beginning. So at this point, we only have a couple of more roofs to do. Let me just take a, a look here in 3D at what we've done so far on the right side compared to the left. And you can see that we've got primarily these two um, the, that uh, we need to work on. So one is called the Dutch Gable Roof and the other the Jerkin Head Roof. And they both can be started with the... Um, uh, multiplane roof tool, but then have to be completed after splitting. And I'll show you at what point it would make the most sense for each of these and why you need to split them um, there. So uh, we'll go back um, to the floor plan. And this set of walls here um, is for the um, where I was uh, doing the gambrel roof. And actually the gambrel roof this variation is pretty much the same as what the gambrel roof uh, variation is here. In other words, um, I don't need this extra set. So we're going to be doing then the Dutch gable roof and the jerkin head roof. So let me zoom in on this. So I'll go to the roof tool and with the uh, each of these we're going to switch this from a gable to a hip configuration, make sure that we're set up for just a single level at the appropriate um, slope, and that we have the overhang set up properly. And I'll just quickly create one, and I'll create the other. Now, if we look at this, what we need to do here is we need to cut a hole out of this one and we need to have this piece of roof move out and have a different edge. So here's how uh, I would suggest working with it. 
uh, this one um, on the left actually will have a different slope. Um, so in other words, uh, the end pieces will be steeper. And so I'm going to go press down on the pivot line here and use the option to change the custom plane to change the slope. So I can go here and say that I'm going to make it, uh, say, 12 and 12, which would be you know, the 45 degrees. So that repositions it nicely. I can do the same thing on the other side. Press down, use that same option here, and change it to the 45 degrees. So that repositions those. Now having done that, and you can see that the two roofs are a little bit different already, I'm going to select this roof and I'll use the option from by positioning myself on the edge of the polygon, on the edge of the roof outline, and use the Boolean subtraction. And in order to get this Boolean subtraction, I need to be on the outer edge or corner to get that as one of the options in the pet palette. I'll go click and use the polygon option to say that I'd like to um, say uh, do this based on a triangular shape and uh, I can do the same thing on the other side. Now it turns out if I if I press down on an edge here I won't get that that option. If I press down on a corner there um, you know I won't get that um, option. I have to be on the outer edge here in order to get that option to do the subtraction in this case. Now if I wanted to I could of course um, measure this to make sure that it was symmetrical same distances but for conceptual purposes I'm just creating those holes using the boolean subtraction and now if I go to, to 3D we can see what they've done. So they're now almost there but I need to bring this top over and I need to clean up the bottom edge. You can see that because this is steeper it actually extends out further than it needs to so I need to go to the edge and instead of using that boolean I'm going to use the standard offset edge here from the pet palette which will allow me to bring that in and I can of course go do the same thing on the back end press down on the edge and reposition it and snap it into position there. Now we still have a little bit of an extra piece here that would need to be cleaned up using another method um, either a solid element operation um, or changing the edge from a fascia, a vertical fascia, to one that was perpendicular or horizontal might work. Um, but uh, let's look at the um, other issue. And actually, interesting, it lost the hole when I did that. That um, I hadn't noticed that before. So let's go back and recreate that hole. Um, so we'll go and do the subtraction here. and again subtract from this side and we'll take a look now in 3D and you can see the hole. Now here's what I attempted at first to do. I went here and I said alright I'm going to reposition this node point so I press down on it and there is something that allows me to reposition this node. Now if I use the shift key trying to lock it in a, in a row here and try to take this out say in line with that point you notice that this hole disappears. Um, it turns out that if I bring this and I just use the shift key just to illustrate it, just bring it part way you'll see that although it looks like I'm repositioning what might be the upper pieces over it actually is creating you know more of the bottom piece essentially removing part or all of that hole. So in order to get around that basically I need to take this and split it into single plane roofs. Once I've done that it becomes easy to select just one roof here and say reposition this node and use the shift key along here to snap in and you can see how easily that works. Let me just do it on the floor plan. It's actually a little bit quicker to select this um, and uh, then reposition the nodes so I can just go with each end and do this as long as I've turned it into single plane roofs because with the multi-plane roof it does not allow you to change the border that calculates the ridge line 
um, or the hip or valley line um, automatically based on the planes. You can't reposition these things. But now I have something exactly what I wanted. Um, and uh, we'll just rotate around it so we can see, you know, see the shape there. Um, so uh, we would want to clean this up perhaps if I, you know, selected um, these. And I could have done this perhaps before if I press down on this and make the edge, you know, horizontal and make um, do the same on this one the edge horizontal we'll see you know this start to have a nice clean edge or perpendicular might work um, somewhat as well uh, so we could also use a solid element operation to trim that now the one where we have a jerkin head where we have just a little piece of this hip at the end we have to uh, split this and also I'll split it into single plane roofs um, here and then um, having done that I can select this roof drag uh, drag this down say something like that and then split it in line with the original ends um, and get rid of the end piece and then take these and reposition the node right on top as well as add you know an additional node there so this becomes a very quick little editing operation and now that that will complete that at least on one side so at this point I've got all of the roofs done again in ARCHICAD 16, which would apply to 15 as well. Uh, you'll see that the ones that were single plane, like the shed, flat, and the uh, skillion and lean-to, were done the same way, uh, but using the roof option um, that shows up that's either, that would be the single plane and perhaps with the uh, square the this option won't show up unless you're in the floor plan then you can switch there um, now uh, the ones that were multiplane that were easy to do were the traditional hip um, and gable uh, roof combination or pyramid hexagonal um, and the standard gable ones and then as we got into some of the options for um, the mansard or gambrel um, ones we had some other variations such as changing the edge shape here or changing the overhang for the um, for the gambrel and then when we got into ones that um, had other variations such as uh, different plate heights such as the salt box or negative slopes such as the butterfly um, or combination of positive and negative slopes such as the M we had to switch it to a um, uh, basically split the multiplane roof into single plane roofs in order to accommodate that and there were one other wrinkle back here was that one with the box gable where we had to change the um, setting for the trimming body for the roof in order to accommodate that um, to make sure that the extra piece that was sitting outside the main walls the main pivot lines was being trimmed properly so I think this uh, concludes my study of the main differences in basic operations on roofs in ARCHICAD 15 and 16, and still going through all of the different roof types that were covered in the earlier lesson. This has been Eric Bobro. Please add your comments and questions on the page down below. Thanks for watching.